Hey, what's going on guys? Cartrix A here. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you an absolutely amazing card routine known as Black Hole. I think you guys are really going to enjoy this one, so let's get straight into this performance. Okay, so for this trick, what I'm going to be needing are the four kings. Now, if the spectator wishes, they can inspect these kings as much as they want. They really are normal. So, the kings are going to be extremely important for this trick, but we don't need them just yet. So, for now, we're going to set them off to the side, but we'll get back to them in just a little bit. Now, I do need to go through the deck and remove four other very important cards. Now, I want you guys to know in advance that the four cards that I'm about to remove are going to represent that of a black hole. And I'm sure you guys know what a black hole is up in space. And I felt like it was only appropriate that since this trick is called black hole, that the four cards I use are four black cards, okay? So as far as these cards go, we don't need them just yet. We'll get to them momentarily. But now we will come back to our four kings as I drop them all over the place. But regardless, I need you to pick one of these kings to be a leader. So what we're going to do is we're going to separate the kings individually as so. And as I just mentioned, you are going to pick one of these four kings to be the leader king. So let's just keep this nice and simple. I'll keep these two near me. And out of the two kings near you, which king do you want to be the leader? So let's just say the spectator, for example, wanted this king to be the leader. So he'll be the leader king and then the other kings will be set backwards. So we'll take the leader king and set him off here to the corner. It'll be sitting there the entire trick, okay? So now this is where we're going to come back to our black hole cards. Now we need one random black hole card. So let's just say the eight of clubs. And I want you to remember that card. We're going to take the eight and set it with the leader king. Now check this out, all we're gonna do is come over, grab one of our kings, and leave it right here in the center of the pack as so. But check this out, all it takes is a slight shake. And what you'll notice is the eight of clubs actually comes back and the king completely vanishes. Let's give this a second try. Take a random black hole card such as the seven of spades. Again, remember that card. Set it with the leader king. Once again, all we do is come over, take one of our kings, leave it right here in the center of the pack, and again, give the cards a slight shake, and you'll notice that the seven of spades comes back and the king completely vanishes. So let's do this one last time. Take one random black hole card, the nine of clubs in this case. Again, remember that card. Set it with the leader king. Take our last king. Leave it once again right here in the center of the pack. And now once again, we take the cards. Give it a quick shake. And you should notice that the nine of clubs comes back. And the king has once again completely vanished so that leaves us with our four black hole cards so where should the four kings be now of course you guys would be saying right here on the table but i don't know if you guys know this the point uh the center of the black hole is known as the event horizon once you cross the event horizon that is the point of no return and reality as we know it is altered forever anyways guys that's the trick i hope you guys enjoyed it so now let's get straight into the tutorial all right guys so hopefully you stuck around for the tutorial now this routine is incredible and i highly recommend you take the time to learn it it is on the intermediate side but with just a little bit of practice you should be able to get this down in no time so let's learn how to do this Okay, so all you're going to need to pull off this effect is any deck of cards. I decided to use the Orbit V6s because I feel that the theme of the deck and the trick tie very nicely together. But again, any deck that you have at your disposal will be just fine. Okay, so once you have your deck, you are going to have to apply a slight setup, but it isn't anything too sophisticated. So all you're going to want to do is take two of your aces and just leave them on top of the deck. And then just take the other two aces and put them on the bottom of the deck. And it does not matter which aces go where. As long as you have two on top and two on the bottom, you will be just fine. 
And as far as the Kings go, you are going to start out with them on the table. The only requirement is, is that they are alternating in color. So black, red, black, red. Once you have that, you are ready to go. Okay, so to start off this trick, you are going to want to acquire a pinky break underneath these bottom two aces right here. So the way that I like to do this is I'll hand out the kings for inspection, and while the spectators are checking it out, make sure they are normal kings, which they are, all I simply do is come over, riffle up, and catch a break right underneath the two aces, but just get a break any way you need to. So you're going to acquire this pinky break, and you're going to keep your hand turned down just like this so you don't flesh the aces to the spectator. So once they hand the kings back to you, now that they are comfortable knowing they are normal cards, you're going to set them on top of the, or the bottom of the deck rather, holding that break. So you still don't want to flesh these aces, so what you're going to do is just bring the deck up so that the face is, are facing toward you and that they can't see it. You're going to take the kings, just place them on the bottom as so, and then turn the deck toward them. And again, you're still maintaining that pinky break the entire time. So as of right now, you have a six-card pinky break, the four kings, and those two aces. Now from here, all you're going to do is lift up all the cards from the break, so you've just stolen those two aces away. You're going to flip the deck over. You're going to take all six cards, flip them over on top of the deck. And all you're going to say is that the kings are going to be very important for this trick, but we don't need them just yet, so we're just going to set them off to the side. So you're just going to push over the top four cards... And now it appears that you're setting over the four kings, but in reality, you're setting over two aces and two kings. So just set those off to the side as so. And all you've just done here is you've ditched those last two kings right there on top. So at this point in time, what you're going to want to do is give the cards a quick cut. And once you've done that, you're going to go through the cards to yourself and you're going to explain to the spectator that you're going to be taking out four very special cards. In the performance, I ended up taking the cards off camera because, again, they're not supposed to see the faces while you're doing this. But in a real performance, all you're going to do is just spread through the cards to yourself so that the spectator can see the backs, but they cannot see the faces. Now, of course, I'm going to be giving you guys the exposed view so you understand what you guys have to accomplish. So what you're going to want to do is you want to pull out three high valued black cards and by high value i also mean spot cards from like maybe seven to ten so that's one thing and you also want to pull out those two aces that you cut to the middle of the deck and here's the order in which you're going to do it so once again you're spreading through the cards to yourself so that the spectator can only see the backs and what you're going to be grabbing in the deck is you're going to pull out one high valued spot card so the eight of spades would be a good card in this case you're going to want to pull out another high-valued spot card. In this case, the order of the cards didn't work out so great, but the five will work just fine. Once you come across your two aces, you're going to pull out these two cards, but you want to pull them out as one card. You don't want the spectator to realize you're pulling out a second card. So what you're going to do is when you come across your aces, you're going to push them together and square them up as much as possible, and then outjog both of them at the same time, so it looks like one card. Then just spread through the deck and up jog one last high-valued spot card. Once you have them, just spin them out and set the rest of the deck down. You are no longer going to need it for the rest of the effect. So what your setup is here, you have a high-valued spot card that's black, another high-valued spot card that's black, the two aces, and one last high-valued black spot card. Now, of course, your goal here is to show your spectator that you pulled out four random black cards. So the way you're going to accomplish this is by doing an Elmsley count. Now, I'm not going to go over the Elmsley count in this tutorial because I have told it in the past and this video will be way too long. So I will leave a link below in the description so you guys can check it out if you don't know how to do it. But regardless, all you're going to do is come over, carry out your Elmsley count as normal to show that you have four black cards. And let your spectators know that these are going to represent a black hole in space. And you'll see why later on. Take those cards and just set them down face up and then let your spectators know that you will get back to them later on. From here, you're going to come back to your alleged four kings. But again, the scenario here is you have two aces here, two kings here, two aces in here, and uh, two kings that are already ditched in the deck. Now, you still want to be able to show all four of these cards as kings. And here's exactly how you're going to do it. 
you're going to catch a break underneath the bottom card. So just get a break any way you'd like. I like to buckle the bottom card, but any way you want to will work just fine. Now what you're going to want to do is slide off the top card, but also take the bottom card with it. So you're holding this break. You're sliding off the top card. So now you're holding a double here. You're holding two cards in this hand. So you want to keep them nice and square and make it look like one card. You're going to take the double and flip it over on top and show one king. Again, this is two cards, so just keep it nice and square. Take the double, do another double lift, and just flip it back over. Set down what appears to be the king. is actually one of the aces toward um, out toward the spectator. To show them a second king, come over, grab the cards in biddle grip. Just slide off the top card. Once again, you're holding a double here. You want to make it look like one card. Flip it over as one. Show them a second king. Again, that's two cards. Keep it nice and square. Square it up. Do another double lift. Set down what appears to be a second king. It's actually the ace. And now you're left with the same two kings. So all you have to do is take the kings, show them, and set them down. Now, a quick tip that I'll give you is when you're showing off the kings, is show them briefly. Don't give them too much time to look at them. Because, again, in reality, you're showing these kings twice. And you don't want them to realize that you're showing the same suits twice. So as you're going through it, you just want to show them briefly. Just so it looks like that they're seeing four kings, but they don't actually realize that they've seen the same suits twice. Okay? So that's really, really important. So at this point, you have the two kings closer to you and the two aces closer to the spectator. Now, you're going to have the spectator choose a leader king. Now, in reality, they're not going to be choosing a king. They're going to be choosing an ace. So just casually say something on the lines of, okay, these two cards are closer to me, so I'll just slide these back. And all I want you to do is choose one of the two kings near you to be the leader king. Now, they're both aces, so it doesn't matter which king or which ace, rather, they pick. Of course, they still think they're kings. Whichever ace they pick, so if they pick this one, they say they want this to be the leader king, just take this, slide it back, put it in the middle of both cards. Same goes if they pick this one. Just take this, slide it back, put it in the middle of go, uh, excuse me, both cards. So in the end, the scenario will be, you have an ace over here, which is a leader king. You have a king, an ace, and then a king sitting in the back. All right. So now you're going to come back to your black hole cards. Again, they still think these are four black cards, but obviously you secretly have your two aces. Now, you're going to perform a move here known as the Ascanio spread. Now, the Ascanio spread looks a little something like this. Now, this I will go over briefly, but once again, I'm not going to go too in-depth with it because I don't want this video to be too long. I will leave a link in the description below if you do need a tutorial. But the way an Ascanio spread works is you're going to hold the cards in middle grip, which is your thumb at the back, your middle and ring finger at the front, your picky off to the side, and your index finger over the middle. You're just going to take your thumb, slide the top card over. Take your index finger, slide over the bottom card, then take your middle finger and slide over the next bottom card to display four cards. But the card right here is going to be double. There are going to be two cards here, so you want to make sure you keep this nice and square. Now, once you've done your Escanio spread, you're actually going to pull out the double. Again, keep it nice and square so it looks like one card. You're going to show the card and say, we're going to take one of our black hole cards, in this case the five of spades, and tell them to remember that card because, again, it's going to appear back in the pack leader. So you say we have the five of spades, and all we're going to do is set it down with the leader king again. This is a double. So all you're going to do is take the double, set it back on top, Take what appears to be that five of spades, set it down with the leader king, but in reality, it's going to be an ace. So now you have two aces here secretly. Now you're left with four cards, but they think you are left with three. So you want to display that you have three cards. So the way that you're going to do this is simply just push over the top card and push over the second card, and then just keep this third card as a double and keep it nice and square. Now, what you're going to do is come over and take this king and put it into the second position. And then you're going to display it as follows. You're just going to remove the top card from this pack, hold it in middle grip. Okay, obviously don't show it. Come over, just pick up the card. 
and put it in. So all you've done was basically just put it into the second position. So you may be wondering why is it necessary to bring this top card over. You will see why momentarily. And then you're just going to stick the king out and show them. But now one really important thing here is do not, and I repeat, do not mention the suit of this king. Because they are going to see this king a second time and you don't want them to notice that. So do not mention the suit whatsoever. Push it in, and now this is your scenario. So now you're all set up to do another Elmsley count. So once you push it in, just flip the cards over, give the cards a shake, do whatever magical gesture you want. And now again, all you have to do is do the Elmsley count, and what you're going to want to do is out jog that third card and then point it out because that's going to be that five of spades. So it'll look like that the five of spades comes back and that the king vanishes. So you're going to pull that card out, you're just going to spin it out as I did, and just set it on top of the pack, which will leave you in this scenario, and that's exactly where you want to be. Now at this point, you're going to take one of the black hole cards, allegedly, and set it with the leader king once again. And basically, you're going to repeat the same exact process, going back to the Escanio spread. So you're going to come over, do an Escanio spread once again, pull out the double, keep it nice and square, Show the black hole card and mention the name, the nine of clubs. Tell them to remember that card. Set down what appears to be the nine of clubs. In this case, is your third ace as so. Now, this is the reason why bringing over that top card is necessary. Because this card is your fourth and final ace. It is not a king, okay? The second card in this pile already is the king. So what you're going to want to do is obviously you want to show this as three cards, but you're not going to push over the top two cards this time. What you're actually going to do is you're going to hold the cards in middle grip, and you're just going to slide out the bottom two cards. So now the double is right here on top. You have two cards right here. All you're going to do is come over with the double, pick up the card, and just put it in. So in reality, you just took that fourth ace, and put it into the third position. But they didn't know you were holding a double. So now all you have to do is just pull back and just out jog the king. Which is now, it looks like you picked it up, put it in. But in reality it was sitting there the entire time. But again, notice that's that same exact king of diamonds again. So that's why you want to show this briefly. And do not mention the suit. Because otherwise they will pick up that you have shown the same king twice. Push it back in. And now once again, you are set up to do another Elmsley count. So just go ahead and do whatever you want, give it a shake, whatever magical gesture you feel. Do your Elmsley count. Show that the nine of clubs has come back and that the king has disappeared. So from here, you're going to take that card once again, pull it out, and set it on top. Now you're going to carry out the same exact process one last time. Hold the cards a bit of grip, do the Escanio spread, pull out the double, Show the black hole card, tell them to memorize that card, set it on top, set down what appears to be the eight of spades is actually your fourth and final ace. So now your four aces are already here at this point. And now this third time you're going to go back to doing it normally like you were doing it before. Push over the top two cards normally this time. Just come over, take this card because this really is a king. Set it on top. Just out jog that second card because that really is the king once again. And once again, just it doesn't really matter at this point, but just don't name the suit anyway just to keep everything consistent. Push it in, and one last time, just do the same exact process. Just give it a shake, do whatever you want. And once again, just do yet another Elmsley count to show that the eight of spades has come back and the king has disappeared. The only difference is this time, now that you've taken out the eight of spades, Rather than put it on the top, you're just going to put it on the bottom as so, okay? Which will leave you in this position. So you're going to do one last Elmsley count. So just go ahead and say, okay, that leaves us with our four black hole cards, and you don't need to upjog any cards this time. Take these cards, because you have your kings here, and you want to get rid of the evidence. So just take these cards and just plop them on the deck. And if you really want to, feel free to just give the cards a cut so that they are lost. Now, I stick with the whole black hole pattern describing the event horizon, which is the name for the center of the black hole, where once you cross it, that's where there's no return and reality is altered. And that's how I kind of go about revealing the four aces, because everyone thinks that you've basically just swapped places 
uh, as far as the black cards and the kings go. But then at the end, obviously, once you reveal the four aces, your spectators will be blown away. And yeah, that is pretty much it. That was Black Hole. I really hope you guys enjoyed this routine. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And I will see you guys for my next video. Cartrix8, signing off.